And because we have a choice. Amen. If you're miserable, stay home and tell nobody you know Jesus. Praise God. And we don't need any miserable Christians. We're to be filled and dressed with the presence of God. And the anointing of the power and divine nature in every area. But it can't happen unless you're connected. Everything is about being connected. If you ain't connected, then you're disconnected. It's a simple thing. Amen? And because this is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice, that means God's got a plan. And His grace is continuous, which is the plan of escape. Amen? Oh, glory. One of the things the Spirit put on my heart today says, we need to be living a life of power. Everyone say life of power. You know, he came to bring life and abundant life. And that life cannot be established without power. And I'm not talking about physical power. You can go pump as much iron as you want and do 25,000 push-ups a day. But that power ain't going to cast out a devil. Amen. Amen. Only the power on high casts out devils. And your fight and my fight isn't physical. It's spiritual. The world is controlled by Satan's kingdom. It's ruled by deception and fear. It's been going on. You and I were born into a war. Amen? And it's a spiritual war. And God is raising up a military, a raising up an army, especially in these last days. Pulling them out of darkness and placing them into its light. And the first thing he begins to do is cut us loose from us. Cut us loose from our past. Because unless something dies, it can't grow. So we are in a life of death to self, always, and in a life to give to him. You know, I'll never forget the day the Lord said to me, guy, you want to get off drugs and alcohol, you want a new life. I had to think about that. That means I had to give up everything. Everything. I had to walk away from everything. My family, my children, everything. My talents, my abilities, my possessions, had to walk away from it all. I basically became homeless. I was living in a house that was going to be foreclosed on any moment and get thrown out. Then Jesus showed up. And I realized that everything I was ever looking for was him. <laughs> See, because I knew about religion, I hated religion. I hated going to church. hated all that stuff. I used to go to church and leave all my dope and weapons outside. Thinking that something might happen, you know. But I didn't change going to church. I changed by getting connected to the power of Christ. That's how change comes. See, you can have knowledge but no power. There's a lot of people that know the Bible and are still going to hell. Because they can't stop touching unclean things. They can't stop using drugs. They can't stop pornography. They can't stop things that are promoting evil, wickedness, and sin. They can't stop because they got no power. No power. God did not call us to become beggars. Amen. He said, I came to bring you life and life abundantly. I'll never forget, I seen on TV on this, they were doing an interview with this, I think it was a priest or something. He said, I've taken a vow of poverty. I said, what an idiot. God did not call you to be impoverished. What kind of sign is that? Who wants to become a Christian if you're impoverished? We need to be rich in Him. Amen? See, if you're truly in line, the blessings of prosperity come. And that doesn't mean you have to have a lot of money. It's not about a lot of money. Because much money to many people is destructive. But He wants you to live Life and life abundantly. He wants you to be a sign and wonder to the world. He takes everything that's been destroyed. He takes all the outcasts, all the boneheads. I was number one. And he takes them, he turns them around, puts them on the potter's wheel and begins to mold them and turns them into one of his trophies so that we may be a sign and wonder to the world. See, but too many people step off the potter's wheel. They say, yes, 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 Lord. And then when the troubles come and God begins to test them and purify them and regenerate them, they run. There's no wimps in the army of God. You're a fighter and you're a soldier. 
Other than that, you're a runner. Amen? Praise God. Let's grow for it. So we need to have a life of power. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. If you don't have a Bible, we have plenty of them. Or just sit next to someone and tell them you're sharing with their Bible. <laughs> There's no respect over Bible here. <laughs> Glory. <sighs> Nothing greater than worship in the Lord, you know? Man, once you break through and you get connected, then it's like, drink. When Jesus shows how the drinks are on the house. Oh, glory. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. Let's speak it together. The former account I made of O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Now, Theophilus was an attorney. He was a friend of Luke who wrote the book of Acts. Luke was a doctor. So Luke was explaining, he was writing this letter to him, so that's why it's called the books of Acts. It's the Acts of the Holy Spirit using man. And, and verse 2, until the day in which Jesus was taken up, after he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen. So in other words, he gave commandments, he gave direction. How many of you know when God speaks, it's a command? To whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs. Being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So after Jesus' resurrection, remember, <laughs> even individuals rose from the dead. Those that were believers at that time during his ministry rose from the dead, went into the city and witnessed to everyone. Jesus rose from the dead, and he stayed on the earth for 40 days. And in that 40 days, he appeared many times. And while the, uh, the disciples were assembled, verse 4, being assembled together with them, he showed up. And he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. In other words, he was preparing them for the next feast. See, there are seven feasts of the Lord. Every Jew ought to know all about the feasts. If they're really practicing their belief. And in this, Jesus came and he's the only one who can fulfill each feast. So the first feast is Passover. The second feast is unleavened, which he went to hell. So Jesus died on the cross, which was Passover. Second feast is unleavened. He went to hell, took the keys from the devil. A third feast is first fruits. That's when he rose. Amen. Then 40 days later, which he was telling them, he was preparing them for the next feast. It's called the Feast of Pentecost. Pente mean 50. So Jesus was on the earth 40 days. Ten days after he was taken back up, he was going to send out his spirit. The spirit of the Father, the spirit of truth, the spirit of the sword of the spirit, the spirit of power, the spirit of the anointing of God. And he commanded them, do not leave until you get filled and baptized in the Holy Spirit. He was not talking about baptism of water. He's talking about the baptism where Jesus comes and fills you with his spirit. And verse 6, Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Jesus was not talking about an earthly kingdom. He was talking about eternal kingdom. And he said to them, It's not for you to know the time or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive what? You shall receive what? Power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be what? Witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Ju all of Judea and Samaria, and to the what? And to the end of the earth. In other words, you shall receive power from your Creator to overcome evil influence and a sword of the Spirit to battle the source of influence. 
fulfilling the, first, the fourth feast of the Lord called Pentecost. Amen? Now, you and I are called to battle. Amen? Our purpose is to what? Destroy Satan's kingdom. And our destiny is to infiltrate the world system and rescue those who have been taken under the power of Satan. Amen? But you can't do that without power. And you can't have any power unless you're connected. You can have all the words you want, but if you ain't filled with the Spirit of God, there is no power. See, you and I have to have power to overcome. Overcome temptation. Overcome voices. Overcome desires. Overcome the things that displease God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5. You cannot do any of these things without the power of Christ. Second Corinthians chapter 5. A life of power. You know, there's a lot of words, but no power. A lot of people like to talk, but they can't walk. A lot of wannabes, but not willing to be. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 16, 2 Corinthians 5, 16. Therefore, from now on, we regard what? No one according to the flesh, which is associated with the world. Anyone that's worldly. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him no, thus no longer, because he sure don't look like Jesus no more. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ... If anyone is in Christ, now Christ is power. Amen? It's the anointing. It's the eternal presence and power of God Almighty. If anyone is in Christ, he's in power. There's a difference between Jesus being Savior and Jesus being Lord. Because, see, everything revolves around the, tree, three tabern the tabernacle, the three chambers of the tabernacle. There's the outer court, holy place, and most holy place. When you get saved, you're put in the outer court. When you're baptized in the Spirit of God, you get put in the holy place. Then you have access to the most holy place. And he was saying here, listen, anyone that's a new creation, he's a new creation if he's in the power of Christ. Amen? Because without the power of Christ, you're not a new creation. You're trying to do it in your own strength. You're proclaiming to be a Christian with no power. But that's not what Christ-like is. Christ-like is power. To say no to the devil. To change atmospheres. To kick out demons. And to be connected as a sign and wonder to the Lord for this world. Amen? Therefore, if anyone is in the power of Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. That is a process. It's called regeneration. Now, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ. That means God in Christ. That means God Almighty put on flesh. Hello? Hello? had a body prepared for him, came into the world, called himself Jesus and the Son of God because he came from the bosom of God. He is God. Believe me, if God Almighty showed up in his true form, there wouldn't be anything left here. We'd all be dead. But he came in a form. Let me give you an example. You see a bunch of ants going, crawling, and they're going into a fire? You know, you can put your arm out there and you can yell at them, don't go in there. They'll crawl over your arm. The only way to redirect them is to become an ant. That way you can communicate with them. God became man to redirect us. And then he sent his spirit to empower us. And when his spirit came, so did the sword of a weapon. That's why it's so important. See, that's why in the kingdom, 
They're citizens, but everybody should be a part of the military. The problem is, is not everyone's involved in the military. They're getting their butts kicked out there. They're bringing shame to the Lord every day because they got no power to overcome. Oh, they were all preaching the word, but they got no power. Most of them preach the word to satisfy themselves so they go out and use and justify what they just did. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. Verse 19, read it with me. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be what? Reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. As a new creation in the power, presence, and truth of Jesus the Christ, we are living a life of power from the power of life. Does everybody get it? Why? The power of life himself is giving me and you power because we're connected in the spirit not by knowledge by connected spirit to spirit there's a difference and that only happens when you're baptized in the spirit and you maintain the level of being filled with the spirit you know how you get it worship 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 the more you sow the more you reap he who sows to the spirit reaps life the more you speak, the more you sing, the more you decree, the more breath is going out of you, and more light is coming in you. And then things are being removed from you. Amen? Acts chapter 9. So we're getting, getting, living a life of power from the power of life, the life giver. Acts chapter 9. And what a time to be empowered, let me tell you. Many are falling left and right. They're being taken out by deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. False agendas. Acts chapter 9, verse 1, let's speak it. Then Saul, now Saul was a Jew. He was a Pharisee. Boy, he knew it. He was self-righteous. He thought he was fighting for God and doing the right thing. But he wasn't filled with the Spirit of God. He wasn't born again. And Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, <laughs> went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he had found any who were of the way, who were Christians, whether men or women or children, that he might bring them bound to Jerusalem so they can be hung, tortured, burned, whatever. And as he journeyed and came near Damascus, suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goad. So he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what do you want me to do? <laughs> Visitations bring lordship. And the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but not seeing no one. Then Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were open, he saw no one. In other words, he was blinded. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was there three days without sight, and neither ate nor drank. I think he was kind of freaked out. Couldn't even eat. Or drink. Of course, God put him on a fast. <laughs> so, <laughs> verse 10. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. 
He said, here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, arise and go to the street called Straight and inquire the house of Judas. For one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he is praying. He is praying for his life. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might what? Receive his sight. See, you and I were born blind. We were born blind from the things of the Spirit. When the Spirit comes and fills you, the scales come off. And you're now able to see things that the world cannot see. Unless you're demonized and you can see things that the demons see. But when you are freed from the demons, now you see what God sees. And it is the greatest desire of a father, amen, is that his children see what he sees. Then Ananias answered and said, Lord, I've heard from many about this dude. How much harm he's done to your saints in the church in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to go, for he's a chosen vessel of mine. To bear my name before the Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered the house and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with power. That you may be filled, receive your sight and be filled with power. Power. Remember, Jesus commanded the disciples not to go in, not to say nothing to no one, but wait. 500 disciples, he told. Wait till you are empowered with the Holy Spirit. Only 120 showed up. The rest of them started denominations. Oh, hallelujah. Receive your sight and power. Acts chapter 2. Saul lived a life of power from that point on. Acts chapter 2. And verse 1. When the day of Pentecost, that was 50 days after Jesus rose from the dead, it was the promise he said, I'm going to fulfill the feast of Pentecost. Amen? When the, when the feast of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They were empowered with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak with tongues. It's amazing how many individuals still don't believe that there's tongues. Because you know what? They're not connected. They know the letter, but the Bible says the letter brings, the letter kills, but the Spirit brings life. Why does it kill? Because they can't submit to it and it's going to kill them anyways. No power. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So they received power and they received eternal language. Why? So they could speak directly to the Father. And the devil couldn't interpret what they were speaking. It is the only language that the devil can understand. Why? Because your mind doesn't pray, your spirit prays. Amen. So the Spirit of the Lord is praying through you. To the Father, and he knows exactly what to pray. I'm telling you, he knows perfectly what to pray. It's called the perfect prayer. Mark 16. Oh, happy days. Mark 16. Verse 14, it says, Later Jesus appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart. Can you imagine Jesus showing up while you're all hanging around together? 
and rebu get rebuked personally by him face to face. I'm surprised those guys poof, right, fell on the ground. They were weeping and crying like crazy. I think their hearts turned around and were very repentant. Because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. So they got rebuked for not believing the witnesses that had seen him. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he who believes, which means to follow. So don't say, I, it's amazing how many people tell me they're a, a believer, but yet they're out there doing things that they shouldn't. That's not a believer. The word believe means to follow. If you ain't following, you ain't a believer. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. Baptized with what? The Holy Spirit. With what? Power. Power. But he who does not believe, who listen, you can't follow without power. And he who does not believe, does not follow, will be condemned. But I accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Are you following? Well, no, I'm still living the way I want to. Well, your next step is hell. Because of the lie of once saved, always saved. That's not the doctrine of Christ Jesus. And these signs will follow those who believe. Hallelujah. Why? Because they're followers and they're empowered. Amen? He said, in my name. What's the first thing they're going to do? Cast out demons. Hello, isn't that where the problem is? In my name, not in any other name, in the name that God came and manifested and left his call card. He said, now you can use my name if you walk up right with me. If you're connected to me, you can use my name. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons and they will speak with new tongues. That's called tongues. What we just talked about. Why? Because they got empowered and got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now they got another language. And they'll take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly or by no means hurt them, and they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Wow. Believers baptized with power will drive out evil entities of darkness. They'll speak right to the Creator because they have a new language. Why? Because they are now connected to him by the Holy Spirit with power and truth, living in his presence, in his presence in them. To battle, to testify, and to be a sign and wonder is a witness to the world. A life without power is not a witness. That is not a witness. Amen? Acts 26. You know, when God does a rescue, he always brings you to a place to learn. What does he say? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they haven't learned the truth. They've been brought up religiously. Acts 26, verse 12. Hallelujah. Now Paul says, it says that while thus occupied, I journeyed to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests. At midday, O king, he's explaining to the king there, along the road I saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun shining around me and those who journeyed with me, which we just heard about what happened to Paul, who became, who, Saul who became Paul. And when I had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me saying in Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against a goad. So I said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you're persecuting. But rise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a wisdom of both the things which you have seen and the things which I yet reveal to you. And I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you. To open their what? Eyes. In order to turn them from darkness to light. Wow. And from the power of Satan to who? 
to God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Again, Paul was testifying after his conversion. He was expressing a, 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 his experience to King Agri Agrippia. To open, he was to tell him the man about opening eyes from the power of darkness and Satan to the power of life. Only through Christ Jesus and following his way and his agenda. In forgiveness and an inheritance that was available. So here's Paul, who's now witnessing to this king. Why? Because he'd been arrested. <laughs> For what? Preaching. Acts 19. Talking about was eternal life. To those who follow in the steps apart from the world. In Acts 19. Hallelujah. In verse 1. Is everybody okay? And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples. Hmm. Those were believers, right? And he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? When you believed. So they said to him, we have not even so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. So they didn't know about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he said to them, then what were you baptized? So they said into John's baptism, which was the baptism of water. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of remission of sin, saying to the people that they should believe on him, who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in water in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they did what? Spoke with tongues and did what? Prophesy. They were now given power. Does everybody get it? They were now given power. These individuals now live a life of power. You and I live a life of power unless we fall out of position. Unless we get disconnected. Amen? What was he saying? He said, man, you need to, you need to repent from all associations and agreements of disobedience, of evil influence, and get washed by the blood and get rescued by the Holy Spirit to overcome. See, repentance washes us with the blood. Amen? It's amazing how many times I'll ask somebody, when's the last time you repented? Years ago. Step away from them. You don't know what's going to happen. You and I, maintaining power, know that repentance is at the tip of your tongue all the time. Lord, forgive me. Why? Because you're connected, because you're in a relationship. Amen? Lord, forgive me. If you're, if you're walking with someone, you step on their foot, you don't go, get out of the way. You say, excuse me. Why? Because there's a relationship of compassion. And it's the same thing with the Lord. When you step on his foot, you better repent. Lord, forgive me. <laughs> Second Corinthians 4. Hallelujah. Oh, happy day. A life of power. That's the only way we're going to make it, man. Can't make it without the power of Christ. Second Corinthians 4, verse 1, let's speak it. Therefore, since we have this ministry as received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame of sin, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our truth, the message of truth called the gospel, it is veiled, it is veiled to those who what? Who are perishing. They're perishing. 
whose minds the God of this age has what? Blinded them, who do not believe. Lest the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Let me tell you something. That veil is still there. You can see it in the Democratic Party and most of these other parties that are promoting evil, wicked deeds. Amen? Anything that promotes abortion and tries to tell me they're a Christian is veiled. Anything one that promotes same-sex marriage or perversion, sexual perversion, and says they're a Christian, they're veiled. Verse 5. We, for we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. But we have this, what? Treasure in earthen vessels. What is that treasure? Holy Spirit power. That the excellence of the power may be of God and not us. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not despair. Why? Because we have power to overcome everything. Hmm. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, and but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Awesome. You know, one of the things that happens is when you are truly filled with the Spirit and the reality of His presence and power is there, your reality comes of who you are. The identity gets enlightened. And the more you get closer to Him, the more your identity becomes enlightened of who you are, where you came from, what's your destiny, what's your purpose, what's your calling, besides battling and so forth. There's something more God always wants us to do. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2. In verse 1, Paul writes to the Corinthians, and he says, I, And I, brethren, when I came to you, I did not come with excellence of speech or wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. But I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in a demonstration of the Spirit and of power. In other words, his words were anointed. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God. In a mystery, the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the ages for our glory which none of the rulers of this age knew, for they had known they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered in the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. And that word love him means, he says, if you love me, you obey me. So those who believe are those who follow him. These things are not released to those who do not follow. So you can come to service as many times as you want. That's good. Hopefully you'll get it. But there's an area where there's a personal relationship. People come, hear, listen, but still don't obey. So all of these things are not available for them. For God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. How many of y'all want to know the deep things of God? They can only be in the Spirit. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. 
These things we also speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but what the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. For the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, and yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For he has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ and the power of Christ. In Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Let's speak it together. For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you would be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Of his will in all spiritual understanding. Can that happen at the natural man? No. Only when there's a born-again, spirit-filled individual can you, is he able to receive. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing and being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power for all patience and long-suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by Him all things were created that are in Him and that are on earth visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through Him and for Him. And He is before all all things and in him all things consist he is the head of the body the church who is the beginning of the firstborn from the dead that in all things he may have the preeminence in jesus name <laughs> very powerful he delivered us from the power of satan into the power of his son through christ the power of the kingdom it's in other words it's not just about words. It's about power. See, it's about in this things that you resist. You have the power to resist temptation. You have the power to resist the voices of strangers. You have the power to resist desires. You have the power to say no. And the power to say yes to him. We have power to cut ourselves loose from the past. We have power to overcome anxiousness. We can discern all things that are influencing us, whether it's holy, unholy, whether it's of God or not of God. We don't judge people, we judge their fruits. Those are for warnings for us. But if you can't discern someone's fruit, you're going to associate with someone that can harm you spiritually. Because when you start touching or agreeing with the things that they're saying or doing or approving of them, you become a partaker of them. Titus chapter 3. Life of power. You know, when the process of getting unplugged from the world comes, when the Lord begins to pull us out and begins to draw us out, the enemy comes in multiple ways. Because he knows you're still unstable. Amen? That's why it's important to be around those who are stable. Because then the enemy will trick you easy and draw you right back out. He'll play with your emotions. Boy, he loves that. Tries to build guilt and condemnation and everything else. In Titus chapter 3 and verse 1, 
And so remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey and to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness of the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly, that those who have believed following God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to all men. But he says, man, make sure you avoid foolish discussions, <laughs> arguments, and so forth. Make sure you don't associate with things that are going to bring harm to you and touch and agree with them. Amen? The, the regeneration and transformation by the power of Christ into the image and likeness of Christ comes day by day. Amen? It is a process. And it comes by maintaining and being connected to his presence and his word. Following the law of the Spirit. And let me tell you about the law of the Spirit. The law of the Spirit says, deny yourself, pick up the sword, fight and follow. Amen? That's what it's about. That is a law from God. The other law is what you sow is what you reap. So the more you sow to the Spirit, the more life you get. Amen? 2 Timothy 2, and then one more scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 2. The regeneration never stops. But the enemy is always trying to infiltrate to prolong or stop the process of regeneration. When you agree with sin and promote sin, it stops. Regeneration stops. Until you repent and turn from your ways, then it begins again. Now, if you did something that broke covenant, you lost all your rewards in heaven. But you can rebuild them up. Amen? 2 Timothy 2.21. Let's speak it. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter life, he will be a vessel of honor. Why? Because he's got to live in a life of power now. Sanctified, that means separated, not touching things unclean. And useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the, out of the Lord with a what? Pure heart. In other words, you've got to be careful of associations, bring impartations. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel. But be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth, and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. You know, we have a great responsibility. For much is given, much is required. We have a great responsibility. You and I are called to be forerunners. We're not just pew sitters, ushers. We're called to be warriors in the kingdom. We're bombing every kind of place possible owned by the powers of darkness. Man, I'm loading up every morning, man. I love to destroy Satan's kingdom. And so should you. And we should hate evil. Hate evil. Too many people pet evil and compromise it. Oh, it's okay. No, it's not okay. It'll bite you. 
will turn on you. Amen? We want to be a vessel of honor. A vessel. You can't be a vessel of honor if you're not a vessel of power. Amen? We'll close at Revelation 12. With no power. Only power overcomes. Money doesn't overcome. Fame doesn't overcome. Prosperity doesn't overcome. Only power overcomes. Only the power of Christ overcomes. In verse 10, let's speak it. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been what? Cast down, disarmed. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Now, why are all things going, getting crazy? I'm going to tell you right here. Next verse. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell on them, in them. But woe without eternity to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. That's why you're seeing everything exploding. He knows he's got a short time. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we ask that you continue to revive us, quicken us, refresh us, keep us connected, that we may live a life of power in the Spirit for your glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Prepare your hearts for communion. You may bring up any tithes and offerings you have.